All right. Um, so we are very excited to kick off our 20th anniversary celebration. Um, and we have a fantastic lineup of some amazing sessions over the next couple of days. So definitely check out those when you get a chance if you want to register for those. Um, to kick us off today, we're going to have uh, Mark DeRemple and special guest Aaron Hillegas take us through the history of the ranch. Um, and definitely make sure to register for the Q&A with Aaron that follows this session at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, so now without further ado, I'd love to turn things over to Mark and Aaron uh, to take us down memory lane. Modern technology just gotta love it. Hey, so hi, it's me. I'm Mark D. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, kick off the next couple of revelry of uh, since I've been in the ranch orbit for 19 years or so, uh, full time for nine. They asked me to be your tour guide of how we got to be where we are today. Um, and mainly because they know I just can't say no. Uh, so what makes the ranch unique and interesting is how the philosophies of the founders from the early days are still permeating the organization. And I'm going to concentrate on the training side of the world. I figure most of you out there in TV land um, have taken a class or read one of our books. Um, and I can't really talk about all the cool consulting projects that I've been on as, as well. So this is from the origin story of uh, Juan Pablo Claude, one of the longest tenured Big Nerd Ranch employees at 15 years. So he's a, a, a professor of chemistry um, and he was at a bookstore. He picked up a Coco programming book um, and uh, flipped through it and he turned it over um, and um, saw this hippie with a cowboy hat, kind of a weird dude, uh, but he got the book and he liked it and he saw a coupon uh, for going to an in-person class. Um, then talked to Emily, got the discount and went to the class and there was this hippie guy teaching the class in his flowery shirt, his shorts full of holes. And it was just wonderful. And from there, it's, uh, there's an experience that many of us had in the early days of, of Big Nerd Ranch. Um, so the hippie guy, of course, is uh, uh, Aaron Hillegas. And Emily is Emily Herman, lifelong friends since elementary school. And they are the founders of Big Nerd Ranch. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning, it was just them. They did everything, built the class, talked the, taught the courses, wrangled the places the courses got taught, building and growing a company that celebrates the humanity of those that it comes in contact with. So it's the year 2000. Y2K didn't destroy the world. And I guess we better get on with life again. Um, this was the year that the OS 10 public beta um, uh, 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 became available. Um, for those that don't remember, this was the next generation of the Mac operating system, which was pretty much throwing out Mac OS 9 and replacing it with Next Step, uh, which Apple had acquired a couple of years beforehand, Mac-like. And yes, those are gummy bears. So Aaron worked at Next. He programmed custom web objects websites, consulted at Next, built big websites, and he taught people how to program Next systems and taught people inside of Apple after the acquisition. And he had an idea, is to take engineers and teach them something specific about the Mac platform. Um, a lot of folks were doing training back at the time, but doing it really badly. Rambling materials, nonsensical block diagrams, distracting environments, and the instructors just underqualified to teach experienced engineers. So he had came up with three ways of fixing this problem, creating an environment to learn, keep the materials relevant, keep them up to date, and imp most importantly, have an instructor who is an actual practitioner of the technology, somebody who lives in it day, day by day and understands it at a deep level that helps them teach the material. All right, so I have something I wanna say here. Yes. Yes. This was the dumbest idea ever, just for the record. I was newly married. My, uh, my, my new wife was pregnant or just about to be pregnant. And, uh, and I came home one day and I said, you know, Apple has been having me come out to Apple and teach these classes on Cocoa programming. I think I'm going to start a company that is doing uh, you know, professional services, training and consulting for the Mac. 
And my new wife turned to me and she said, do they still make Macs? That's how far down Apple was in, in 2000. And, uh, and for, I have to give her a lot of credit that she went along with this stupid, stupid plan. And uh, it worked out okay, but it was a, a lot of luck and it was mostly just dumb. Okay. Or a whole lot of hard work. Um, yeah, I hope that people would pay a premium because it is better, which most of the time that doesn't actually work, but this time it seemed, seemed to. All right. So 2001, after months in coffee shops furiously building the course is the book that started it all. And this is also the year that uh, Aaron wrote a $30,000 check to Big Nerd Ranch Incorporated and incorporated in February of 2001. So in the bottom there, you can see our OE. It's our jargon for open enrollment. It's kind of like where we were teaching that particular year at Freedom Escape Lodge in, near Asheville, um, North Carolina. Um, it was this like large open room with kind of the room we lived in around the side, a kitchen uh, below the great room, uh, wide open spaces, Mac cubes. It was a really nice, quiet, beautiful environment. And it was on a little farm with like cows and llamas. Uh, the first class, it was a hit. Um, we had nine folks in it. So it kind of codified the model that uh, would carry forward into this day, monastic experience take people out into the woods and make it difficult for them to do their jobs. Create some temporary communities. So be part of a group that's uh, living together, eating together, interacting together, learning together, being a mutual support system. That way you can learn and retain stuff better. All inclusive. So when you flew in, your new community was just waiting for you there at the airport, going into the van, going to wherever it is that you're going. You didn't spend your time wandering to and from a hotel in a strip mall. So in essence, we take care of the lower parts of the uh, of Maslow's hierarchy. Okay, so this is the website from, from 2001. Websites were a much simpler time then. There's a really cool video there, which I remembered watching when I was thinking about taking this class. Uh, it's, you can't see it anymore off of archive.org, but it has a testimonial video from that first class with folks obviously having a really, really good time there. So there's a, there's a backstory to why people were having such a good time in that particular video. So uh, we decided it would be really cool to create a video. And Emily and I were people who always said, you know, I've seen somebody do this, so I can probably do it. And so we uh, found a video camera and we took it out into the field and we lined everybody up to talk. And as we were uh, lining up for a picture, um, the, uh, the bull and the cow in the field behind everyone started mating vigorously and loudly. And so if you watch that video, you can see everybody trying not to giggle because uh, so much is going on at that time. And, uh, and, and so that's why everyone seems to have such a good time. Really, we worked them very hard for that first class. I have a quick story I want to tell about the second class. So I thought was so happy that we got so many people for the first class. I thought this is going to be a hit. It's going to be easy peasy. And then only three people signed up for the second class. And only two of them showed up. <clears throat> and, uh, and the third one, I really tried hard to get hold of them to return their money because they hadn't shown up. And I always wanted to make sure that everybody got a good value for the money they spent at Big Nerd Ranch. And I kept trying to hunt them down. And it turned out that, uh, that he was in like some very spy-like stuff. And I think that he may have just been disappeared because I have never heard from him. And, and if you're out there watching at this moment, we still have your $3,500 and I'll be happy to get it back to you. Okay. Cool. Okay, 2002. This was the year that Aaron and Emily hired their first employee, Chris Campbell. A jack of all trades and master of, of pretty much all of them. It's also the year that uh, moved the operations to the Atlanta, Georgia region. And this was also the year that I took my first course with Aaron. So it's like me, 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 it's all about me. Uh, Coco programming at Freedom Escape Lodge. And um, Aaron did uh, berate me for um, reading the book first. Um, because uh, you know, spoiled the surprises, but at least I could ask like the really, really hard questions and see him squirm up there. And we completed one of these courses, you not only got to take home the materials, but you got a really stylish certificate signed by your instructor uh, telling you 
that they have, um, the instructor has completed as much Cocoa programming as they could possibly cram into five days. Um, and I love that tagline. It's kind of funny, kind of deflective, but really it's true. Those days were just absolutely packed. I was often in the lab there until like 11 o'clock. If someone was struggling, um, often they would they would throw sort of a little fit. They'd be like, I'm, I hate it here. I hate you. I hate all of this. And I would say, well, what's, what's going on? And they'd say, I don't think I was really ready for this class. And I said, okay, well, I can take you to the airport and I give you your money back, or we can just work on it after hours until you feel comfortable. And that's what I ended up doing so many times was just sitting with somebody who was struggling and getting them caught up from that day so they could be ready for the next day. And, uh, and I really uh, was pleased when those people would come back at the end and say, you know, I really got my money's worth from that. I really wanted to do this. And I feel like uh, you moved me forward a lot. And they would often admit, like, I didn't get as much as some people in this class did. I don't think I'm, I got as much as Mark Dalrymple got from the class, but I got, I got a lot and they were happy, so. 2003, we kept teaching more and more classes and uh, continued teaching and expanding the offering, oftentimes through contractors. So we had a, a PostgreSQL database boot camp, uh, Apache web servers, Python, Perl, PHP, all sorts of stuff, including an extreme mentoring on-site offering. And this is also a year that a book that Aaron and I wrote, Core Mac OS X and Unix Programming. Um, we wrote it through a chunk of 2002, published it in 2003, uh, and um, charged a whole lot of money for it. So it was like a hundred bucks out of the gate, um, which uh, we actually got some cash under the table at WWDC when we were uh, <laughs> we had the books um, out there. Um, this was also the year that Freedom Escape Lodge was sold to a yoga retreat or something. So we taught our last class there in 2002, and then found a location uh, also uh, in Georgia this time, historic Banning Mills, located on the Snake River. They had a large common meeting hall, luxurious rooms, and a terrible internet connection. Uh, you had to climb up this really steep hill just to get any kind of cell phone coverage. And if you were in a course that we didn't have books for, uh, you'd have something like this, the plastic, wire, plastic spiral bound notebook. Back in the days, there were like CDs that were jam-packed full of, of information. And the thing with our books are is they are actually the course materials that we use. So when we've published the book, we use it for a while, technology moves on, so we update the book, and then the students become our guinea pigs, helping file off the corner with uh, their, their questions. Um, and this is courtesy of uh, John uh, of, of Juan Pablo Claude. Uh, he is a hoarder as well. So 2004, second edition of the Coco book. And we kept on teaching uh, Django, Linux administration, OpenGL. We even had a games course for a while uh, using a, a, a Coco's 2D. Can we talk about the cover for just a second? Absolutely. So first edition, you can tell that I got the summer intern because like it's got the 1978 font, it's in brown, they use the, uh, the uh, royalty free photograph of the Eiffel Tower. Like it's the ugliest cover of any book I can imagine. And uh, it was actually the, the, the ones they sent me were even worse. The first one was teal and it had a big slide rule on it. And so uh, like the message was, uh, you know, it's a Mac, it's obsolete technology. It's not, a, it's a curiosity, like a slide rule. Um, and, uh, and amazingly, even though O'Reilly already had a book out, it sold pretty well. And so when they, um, when they did the second edition, they gave me a grown up uh, cover designer and the, it's just wildly different and better. And I felt so much better about myself because they actually cared enough to put a decent cover on my book. Yeah, so what is that on the cover? That's a Vespa scooter. And actually, so once we took over publishing our own book, so Big Nerd Ranch, this one was published through Pearson uh, at, under the Addison Wesley name. But we eventually came a, a publisher and Pearson just distributed our books for us. But we stuck with this theme of light transportation. So there were books with 
uh, skates and snowmobiles and all bicycles and all sorts of light transportation. So this was the first one and that's a Vespa scooter. Okay, so historic banding mills, um, middle of nowhere, there's this large central lodge area which uh, had the communal uh, uh, eating area, uh, the gift shop, they have the same 30 minute loop of like dulcimer backed 1970s soft rock music on a continual loop playing over and over and over again. And then downstairs is uh, the actual room where we taught. The um, rooms where you could actually stay are off to the side and kind of surround the area in some tree houses and uh, bridal quarters and all sorts of stuff in various areas on, on the property. Um, the sign that you see when you come into the place, this was the view from the classroom, which was absolutely gorgeous. Um, inside of the lodge, there's a lot of taxidermy around if you were into that kind of stuff. Um, the rooms had jacuzzi tubs and sometimes a critter would come in from the outside and just kind of set up shop as like, hey, I'm a little tiny scorpion. I just want to say hi, I'm in your giant bathtub. Um, why are you screaming? This is an open enrollment class that I uh, taught there. There was a zip line when, what is it? The largest uh, canopy zip line in North America or the world or something. So the classroom was right by the opening zip line salvo. So you'd hear this and occasional screams as the day would go on. Um, this is from a uh, classroom inside. Uh, whenever I taught, I would usually do balloon animal stuff. And here's Juan Pablo Claude, who also took my class, uh, making, I think, a threefold dog uh, as well. Okay, so 2005, second edition of the Mac, of the Advanced Mac Programming Book came out. We re renamed it, figuring folks are just programming a Mac. They really don't need to know that it's a, it's a Unix system. And our website in 2005. So just a little a bit of, on consulting. Um, we're, we've never actually been a purely training shop. We've always done consulting since day one. You know, it wasn't our passion for contracting then, but as a way of keep, keeping our skills up to speed, uh, to use time uh, when we weren't developing or teaching curriculum. Um, was also an important part of the revenue stream, um, but it's really complimentary. We learn a lot from consulting. People trust us because of the training uh, and they feed each other in a nice way. Um, there is a really nice phrase I heard, uh, big ideas demand expertise. So people come to us with big ideas and big dreams, need training, I need to be an expert, I'm rebooting my career, we have this really hard problem that we can't solve ourselves, we need somebody to help us. So why not Bigner Granch? Okay, 2006 brought us some big changes for our uh, open enrollment. So if you notice in the thing down there, uh, Kloster Eberbach, this is a historic facility in Frankfurt, Europe. Um, and also a new one there, Callaway Gardens. Um, that's because Thanksgiving weekend, historic banding mills had a fire in their main building. So it was- And it was quick. burned to the ground. Like there was nothing left. It, it, was, it was shocking. And we had a class coming up six days after the fire. So it was a kind of an amazing moment when the company came together. And once again, we were very small at the time, but we uh, reinvented everything. We, we found a place for everyone to stay. We lined up meals. We lined up the shuttle. We replaced all the computers. And the last, last thing was the projector. Um, people were arriving and I was going one last pass past the UPS store where our post office box was and the projector was there. And so we uh, were able to run the class that same week. It was, uh, it was amazing. Okay, Kloster Eberbach. So it was in, so if you want monastic, you get monastic. It was a um, basilica that I think uh, seminary shut like in the 1400s or something like that. Really beautiful site and it's a restored historic site now. And they also make wine there. Um, so there's some photos from my teaching stints. Um, we didn't actually teach inside of the giant reverberant room, but it was gorgeous. If you've ever seen the movie with Sean Connery, The Name of the Rose, it was interior shots were filmed here. Uh, the streets are paved with bacon. It is absolutely amazing. And the uh, 
where we taught wasn't actually in the basilica it was in the um fancy restaurant so it was a tour this place is a tourist destination so the restaurant is really high calorie awesome german food i think it was like two kinds of pork and two kinds of, of uh, potato with with every meal um and the room was beautiful is absolutely gorgeous these nice tables it was airy they had a um, cappuccino machine in the back push a button it'd make a pretty decent drink as well as some of the most amazing cookies that i've had in my life so 2007 so with historic banning mills out of the way for for the time being um we're now teaching at a Callaway Garden and uh, at Serenby, which I never taught at, so I have no pictures, um, but I guess it's cool. And um, 2007, something else happened that year, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that iPhone thing. Yeah, the iPhone came out. Um, and needless to say, that had a kind of a, a small impact on the industry as a whole. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that. And oh, and Aaron worked directly with Steve uh, in the next days, um, which sounds like it was a, <laughs> he was a difficult person to work with. I don't want to, you shouldn't overstate my friendship with Steve. I, I, uh, you were his I, buddy. You, <laughs> you taught him everything he knew. I had a really, uh, they had a competition at next called the Woe Olympics to see who could do the best web objects application in a week. You set up a hackathon to test the new web objects. And I won the Woe Olympics. So for a year there, I claimed that I was the world's greatest web objects programmer. Um, but Steve decided he wanted to use it at the Internet World uh, Conference. He was keynoting it, and he was going to do my conference room scheduling app on in the keynote. So they he had me pair with a designer, and we made it look really pretty. And then at the last minute, he decided he wouldn't do it. He would just do the customizer Dodge car demo again instead. So, but that's the, the, Steve and I bumped into each other at parties a couple of times and we did that thing together, but we were not buddies. Just dashing all my dreams, man. All right, to 2008, uh, Historic Banning Mills reopens, yay. And they totally rebuilt and redesigned their main edition. Uh, third edition of the Coco programming book came out and the iPhone SDK. We can now program the iPhone natively and this was a big inflection point for the company. We had Objective-C experience and the iPhone SDK was similar to Mac programming. Like the universe was smiling on us. But there was one problem, which was that you weren't allowed to talk about the iPhone SDK. It was under NDA. And so every developer could download it and play with it, but they couldn't talk about it with any other developers, uh, which makes it very hard to teach a class. Um, so I very carefully went through the end user agreement and I found the, 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 the clause where you could talk about the iPhone SDK with contractors that you had hired to write code for you. So um, what I did for the first class was actually hire everybody as contractors. So we, uh, we signed a contract that said that they would write 44 lines of iOS code for me and present it to me at the end of the week and I would pay them $1. And, um, and so everyone who showed up for the first class or, or maybe two was actually a contractor for the, the Big Nerd Ranch and that enabled us to talk about the iPhone SDK. And that was the year we ran our first iPhone boot camp, also apparently at a, a, a Serenity. Yeah, quick. 2009. So up until this time, the company had basically been in coffee shops, uh, rented meeting rooms, uh, Venocity, it's like a wine bar or something, um, like uh, rented office. Uh, there's like a Summit Financial Building, Peachtree Tower. It's like, I have no idea why there'd be anything named Peachtree in Atlanta, but I guess that there, there is uh, a small office nobody went to. Um, but this is when uh, folks moved into a condo. Like, oh, oh my God, an office. The condo was clearly a violation of all the zoning laws. But in 2008, this guy who, who owned this, uh, this uh, development was very eager to get rid of it and, uh, and looked the other way while we ran the company out of it. We were quiet, we didn't create much traffic, but it was uh, definitely on the, on the gray side of legal. 
but it was really nice. It was a great location. There were restaurants and uh, it's, it's near to everything on this east side. And it worked really well for a while, but I always thought too small. I always thought, well, Big Nerd Ranch will never get to be more than 12 people. This is plenty of space. So. And that is a theme that will we'll keep coming back. Um, so this is uh, the, the big arrow is pointing to where the, um, the condo is, uh, view from the inside. Um, a rite of passage is that, hey, welcome to Big Nerd Ranch. Here's your IKEA desk. Please assemble your desk. And oh, never mind that singing. It's just Bill Phillips. He cycles over and then he go, takes a shower and sings at the top of his lungs. Um, and there's like this closet is like somebody's somebody's office. Um, it was before my time, but it sounded like an absolutely wonderful place. And the like the the main kind of like sales and support folk were around a folding table. They had little instruments, so uh, they sold a corporate training class that like bang symbols and if they got paid they'd ring a bell so that everybody could hear um over bill singing like hey money has come in so 2010 kind of a calm year the first edition of our iphone programming book came out and this was before apple called it ios and so and this is the year i think like we discovered you can make websites larger than that than, than than a column um so one of the cool things when particularly being an instructor is just the breadth of students that we had in their skills, the products they work on, their backgrounds, the dreams that they had. So we had a grandfather from Italy who built amusement park kiosks, a, a literal rocket scientist who even they had difficulty with retain release memory management. Um, you know, hey, there's this father who wants to bring his two kids. Is that okay? Well, his dad was, the dad was 90 and the kids were in their 60s. And it turns out that the dude was like this physicist who's designed his own hearing assistance device with taught inventors of languages that you've heard of and folks who just wanted to kickstart a tech career. Um, one of the guys in the class I taught had piano tuning software. This was a thousand dollar piece of software, but it had been honed over decades and just like the algorithms and all the stuff involved in tuning it in tuning a piano is like mind-blowing we also got to train at amazing companies like we i got to teach at pixar and google and apple and microsoft linkedin any any successful tech company you can think of at this point we were pretty much the the people who did I, ios training for everyone and it was a really exciting time to be, you know, once again, there's a lot of luck involved with growing a business. And we were definitely in the right place at the right time for this. 2011, we taught our first Android class on Honeycomb and more books, um, Objective-C programming language. Um, so we've been using other people's Objective-C programming books for the, the lead in to the Mac and the iOS classes, it's about time that we, we owned that. Fourth edition of the Cocoa book, second edition of the iOS book, and then the third edition of, uh, of the uh, advanced Mac book. It's like one of the longest book titles that I think I've ever come across. So, I love that Objective-C book. <laughs> it's my, of, of the things I've written, it's my absolute favorite. When I read it and I look at how I explain pointers and functions and uh, it's, it's really, I know it's the most junior book and it's the most out of date and it's still absolutely my favorite. So we're getting more and more corporate clients, more corporate training and iOS was an ascension. So a colleague at mine at a previous company um, who was like Mac and iOS thing was, think was said is like, the demand for Mac and iOS developers is like finding our personal lifelong attachment to roadkill dressed in funny hats is suddenly needed by thousands of company, companies. It's like, why, why, how is this, this happening? So uh, outgrew the condo, uh, moved into an office on C Krog Street, a legit little office park. And once again, we thought, well, we will never get larger than 25 people. So this is this will this will be where we're going to be forevermore. And we, you see, we got the fancy furniture, a really cool table that gave everybody splinters. And then we had uh, cubicles, and and pretty soon we were doubling up in cubicles. And then we had people in the hallways. 
And Mikey, you like to draw the uh, the face of disapproval around the office. Um, and I'm not sure they're talking about Emacs, but that's that's okay. And um, you know, a lot of folks, there's a lot over there in the corner um, as well. And so like in Krog Street, Krog, Krog Street, but outgrowing it. So the company purchased an abandoned ironworks with the goal to rehabilitate it and turn it into our offices. Oh, sorry. I, how could we forget Barbecue Steve? Um, yeah, he built, this is for one of the Clash of the Coders, and he built a rail gun that would uh, ring that bell. Um, yeah, it's always dangerous to hang around Steve when he's being creative. But the, um, the ironworks, um, this is what it looked like after, uh, I don't know, Aaron, if you purchased it or the company purchased it, it looks kind of like something you'd see in a horror movie. Yeah, no, it, it, uh, we set up a new entity called Big Nerd Properties and Big Nerd Properties owned this and it also owned 13 acres in South Fulton County, which we haven't talked about at all, but um, we'll get back to that. This is uh, this was an old ironworks and someone had planned to turn it into a big multi-use thing and in 2008, it all fell apart. And I went in and offered them a pittance, but I would pay for it in cash. And this was considered one of those toxic assets. And so they sold it to me and um, we, we renovated it. But when you see what, what we did, it was, uh, it was largely to get around the need to do, redo the zoning. So we kept these studs standing and then we basically rebuilt everything else. We re-poured the slab. We did a new, oh, that's the hard hat, uh, cowboy hats. And uh, it was just a great experience. And it gave us a chance to really think about who we were in the long term, right? It was, it was until this point, we had never had anything, well, we had, had the condo, but um, we hadn't had anything really solid to say who we were. And so we put a lot of thought into making it energy efficient and giving it good light for people and high ceilings that they'd feel comfortable. And one of the things we did was those sun tubes. So they had these long, reflective tubes that would go from the roof, which had a frosted dome on top of it, all the way to the ceiling and would be another frosted window. And so we had natural light even in the very center of this, this big building. And it was a really exciting project. This is one of those things that when I look back and I drive past this building all the time now, and it really has changed that neighborhood. This was part of that neighborhood becoming something new and, and special. And I'm glad that Big Nerd Ranch got to be part of that. 2012, another really big year. So the mobile thing has really taken off. Fortune 500 companies were talking to us, Big Nerd Ranch. A third edition of the iOS book came out. So as a company, we had mobile experience. A lot of iOS experience, getting our heads wrapped around about how best to develop uh, on Android. But we, we had a weakness. Um, because these mobile apps talk to websites and web services, but as a company, we just didn't have a broad comp competence in them. So we joined forces with High Groove Studios. This is their mascot, the Wolf Brain. Um, from uh, archive.org, wolves can function on their own, but they excel within the pack. Individually, High Groovers are excellent developers, but we're stronger together. And I, I, I just love that. So with uh, High Groove, um, Charles Brian Quinn, AKA CBQ, um, the founder of High Groove uh, joined the executive team. And CBQ had been our Ruby on Rails instructor for years. And uh, Aaron and CBQ are part of like a, a baby CEO book group or something like that. And so it was like, yeah, we knew CBQ, he's, uh, uh, he's cool. And with um, influx of people, we have a, a new, new office the GHQ, the Big Nerd Ranch Galactic Headquarters. That's what the Ironworks turned into. Um, and plus with uh, the merger with High Groove, they kept their office as well named USS High Groove. So the Big Nerd Ranch has, has a sense of humor. So the building in the official Atlanta bureaucracy records is the G Big Nerd Ranch Galactic Headquarters. So. Stacy is saying, it's like, yeah, I have to you know, get a permit approved or something. It's like, yes, hello, I'm from you know, talking about Big Nerd Ranch Galactic Headquarters. Um, and this people, this group here did a case study of the Big Nerd Ranch Galactic Headquarters. Um, all the meeting rooms were named after members of the BGs. 
here is Aaron opening uh, opening days with the giant scissors and and balloons and it's what it looked like on the outside. It's like <laughs> now it's a gorgeous building. Uh, back up one slide. Uh, see the the metal uh, sign there by my feet that was hanging on inside when you walked in in the door and there was a light behind it. It looked really cool, but then we changed the logo and at about the time we took this down. Um, the Atlanta History Museum called Looking for Something. They felt we were one of the really significant companies in Atlanta, along with, you know, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Delta Airlines, and Big Nerd Ranch. So uh, we donated that sign. And if you go to the Atlanta History Museum, that is hanging from the ceiling in the big room. So uh, you can go see it if you're ever curious. And then some interior shots before we moved in. This is this is where the light pipes were, right? Yeah, those round things are light pipes. Those are actually carrying sunlight from the roof. And then a view into the office area. And then just, just an average everyday snapshot of life working inside of uh, the Big Nerd Ranch. 2013. You're going to tell the story of that, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> we can. Do you want to do it? I can do it justice. You you were you were more into that. <laughs> so so the gentleman standing up on the um, bench back there is a uh, Steve Sparks, aka Barbecue Steve, um, and he's the guy with the rail gun. He likes to set things on fire. Um, he's an amazing cook, um, and he's also an amazing parody lyricist. So he took the uh, song uh, "Baby Got Back" and made uh, "Coco Got Blocks." So it was just a song of nothing but Mac and iOS programming in jokes. And our marketing department, I guess somebody had a spouse that was trying to kickstart a, a videography company. And so it was like, hey, let's make a music video and took over the office for a day filming things. Steve, he has like this BNR ring and the mouse around his neck is a big um, Flava Flav kind of outfit. You can see a uh, nerd step Christopher there kind of jamming. Um, uh, I think Darren is holding a large curly brace that is used in some dance sequences. We tried to get a uh, Stacy, our current CEO to twerk, but she uh, declined. Um, but you can find the video for this out on the internet. It is um, epic. There is anyway. a link in the chat. Excellent. Thank you, John Dobb. John Dobb rules. Okay, so we were in 2013. Um, so nerds are more than just programmers. We've got incredible designers as well. So they've got this great blend of creative energy and a disciplined engineering mindset. And so like programming, we couldn't keep it to ourselves. Taught our first mobile design course in 2013. Um, so this was, I guess, the second edition of the Objective C. Oh. And that's when Mikey got his name on the cover there. He had helped yes. some on the first edition, but really he was a huge help on the second edition. So we, we put his name on the cover uh, and it's, it was a great collaboration. Mikey is awesome. Also shipped the uh, first edition of the Android programming book. So this was us starting to put our stamp on uh, Android as well. Um, we stopped teaching at Cluster Eberbach and started teaching in a Silomar on the West Coast. And yet another office change. So with the merger, we outgrew the galactic headquarters. Oops. And so started building out um, the next office, which of course would be uh, the intergalactic headquarters. Um, the meeting rooms were named after scientists and nerds. So we had like Ada Lovelace. We currently have Isaac Newton and Zoidberg as well. So Stacy in front of our uh, shelf of awards um, refurbished uh, kitchen area. This is Ada Lovelace, our main uh, meeting room where though pre-pandemic had uh, company uh, firesides and, and group meetings, as well as folks working over in the Android pod. And it's a dog friendly workplace as well. We love our puppers. 2013 was also the last year for this old friend and welcome to our new logo 2014, iOS programming, fourth edition. Um, not much else happened to 2014. 2015, um, moved from Banning Mills to Callaway Gardens to better handle running multiple classes at once. HBM really only had one good place to teach in. And then there was the 
classroom of misfit toys where if you had a small class going on at the same time, you could teach it uh, there. Um, some more books, first edition of the Swift programming language, fifth edition Coco, fifth edition iOS, second edition of our Android book. Um, All right, one of our, our mistakes to... was shipping that Coco book at the moment we did. So Swift was still in heavy fluctuation and it wasn't a book that we updated that often because it didn't sell very well. And so we really should have paced it better and waited until it got to a more stable point. Even as that went out to the bookstores, it was already out of date. And it's so painful to log into Amazon. If you ever really want to hurt somebody's feelings and they've written a book, you should get on Amazon and just really give them a hard time. Um, I have some terrible things. And most, I, I think I wrote pretty good books. And most of the reviews are really positive. But there's just enough that if I feel like a jerk one day, I'll just go and look at the bad ones and just obsess on how I could have been a better writer and had gotten people more for their $49.95. So for anyone who bought this Coco programming book, I, I just want to apologize. Uh, I, I should have waited. Okay, 2015 website. 2016, Swift 2, iOS 6, also shipped a, a front end web book. And then 2017, we transitioned out of Callaway over to Stone Mountain, much closer to the Atlanta airport, third edition Android, and also launched Frontier, our educational video library. And this is the year that Stacy takes over the reins as CEO, and she still uh, still is. Goddess of the universe, how may I serve you? Um, so Stacy really, she joined us during the condo days as a part-time bookkeeper, and she grew with the company. The kids got older, so she went full-time, then became our accountant, then our chief financial officer, and then finally CEO. Everybody knows and trusts Stacy. So Stone Mountain, I've never taught there, but here are some pictures of a sunset, classroom, um, classroom, another lake. This is my favorite, the like thing of ice cream, just reach in, get some ice cream. I love that stuff. Um, the power went off, so the staff gave glow sticks to everybody and they had, had a rave. Um, and a uh, number of folks talking to students, as well as cake. Gotta have cake. So 2018, first edition of the Kotlin programming book. Um, and uh, I mentioned Clash of the Coders, which is essentially a company-wide sh hackathon. We shut down for a couple days, people work on cool stuff. And the winner this year was a facial recognition for dogs. Point your phone at a dog and it tell you that this is Laska, she can have treats and Savannah is her owner. So. 2018 was also the last year for this old friend. And welcome to our new logo. Very clean and, and minimalist. Um, we briefly toyed with the idea of a deeper rebranding, um, but we decided uh, maybe in a, in a couple of years. Um, so unfortunately we had to stop teaching at Asilomar due to changes in California regulations and how our week long trainings were classified in the bureaucracy. Um, so just Stone Mountain for uh, instruction now. Fourth edition of Android programming, uh, Android 4K, Android for Kotlin. So a rewrite of the book using the, the new language and also uh, d more design courses, UI essentials design and building an advanced design course. 2020 and what a year <laughs> in-person training is like, well, that's not gonna happen. Um, so we moved our classes virtually, but we are able to keep an environment to learn keeping materials relevant, as well as our instructors are still practitioners of the technology. So we're still able to deliver a high quality product. But I do miss the afternoon walks and meals with my students. And office work as well is kind of like dangerous. Um, but half the ranch is remote. So we have a remote co culture and we could help our clients also adapt to a remote culture. Still ship two books, uh, iOS 7th edition and Swift 3rd edition. And if that wasn't enough, like High Groove and Big Nerd Ranch joining to do better things, we joined the Project 202 family and they've got a lot of great resources and a great reach. But Big Nerd Ranch as a brand is like really strong and internationally known uh, as well as our reputation for quality, um, as well as the undercurrent of Aaron and Emily's influence. So future looks bright. And PT202 gives us access to a new, new discipline, ESI, Experience, Strategy and Insights Basically, we get to research on humans in their native work habitats and hopefully make their lives better. Okay, and so um, 
we've got like really, really cool employees. Emily referred to us as the island of misfit toys. So everybody belongs with whatever weirdness that, that they that they bring. Um, and we like to ask, kind of like, eh, what's, no, what's your weird? What kind of the cool things that you do that you like or that you were? So among nerds with PhD in inorganic chemistry, literally the smartest person in Kyrgyzstan, uh, and former Air, Por Air Force military police officer, gigging musicians who happen to program, school teachers, a former Navy submariner. We got a Grammy winner in our uh, alums, as well as miniaturists, people who do dollhouses. Um, this is a Savannah and Des. They are winners of the HGTV Biggest Little Christmas Showdown. And this is host and Broadway star James Monroe Englehart. It's so cool seeing people you work with and know are incredible, like completely smash the competition. And then 2021, um, coming to a bookstore near you, Kotlin 2E sometime this year. Um, OE, maybe virtual only. Uh, when we go back to in-person, it's still up in the air, but as the pandemic comes under some kind of control, we can start getting back together. So a bit of a wrap up. So this is all the stuff that we offered classes for over the years. Archive.org is my friend. Um, I spent a lot of time in the Wayback Machine. We even built a Windows 8 course, and I believe I recorded up at Microsoft. Uh, ship one or two books over the course of time. These are the uh, OE locations, open enrollment locations, the Silomar out on the West Coast, uh, close to Eberbach up there in Germany and places in the world that we have taught and consulted with thousands of you. So I, I think Stacy, when I was interviewing her for this stuff is like 175 people strong with a global reach with such a silly, quirky little name. So, Big Nerd Ranch, happy 20 years. Thank you. That was great. I survived, yay. <laughs> All right, that was awesome, guys. Thank you very much. And I just want to uh, put a big, big, big plug for Bird Nerd Ranch. I think, it's, I think it has a lot of legs, and I think we're really gonna, um, we're gonna make that work. Mm -hmm. Just through force of will if we have to. It's got two legs and two wings. It's like you cannot beat that. Exactly. Yeah. If you need to walk or you need to fly, whatever you need. Um, okay. So we have about just about uh, 12 minutes until uh, the Q&A with Aaron starts. Um, I've just put the, well, it looks like two people have put the registration link in there. So, um, so you will definitely get it. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you uh, for the Q&A. Mm -hmm.